Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to an interesting topic that I've been wanting to discuss for a while and that is the idea of planned obsolescence and particularly in the sim racing community. And first and foremost, planned obsolescence to describe its official terminology is the idea that a product is designed without future support or a product is designed to fail or be replaced after a set amount of time. And this is a the situation that I'm going to describe ties in a little bit with planned obsolescence, but also to deal with mainly sim racing companies and when they refresh products. So the two situations I want to discuss is with Next Level Racing's GT seat add-on and with Fnatic CSL Elite's load cell pedal add-on. So back when I started sim racing back in 2021, November 2021 or thereabouts, I ordered the CSL Elite pedals knowing that one day I would like to upgrade to the CSL load cell pedals so I get the three, set up, three pedal setup and then around that same time, I had ordered the Next Level Racing Wheel Stand 2.0. Now, the Wheel Stand DD and the 2.0 were announced back in June of 2019 or thereabouts. And in August of 2021, Next Level Racing had realized hey, everybody who had ordered the Wheel Stand 2.0 or the DD might want to upgrade so they have a seat. So we're going to offer the GT seat add-on. So instead of having to buy a full scale cockpit and still have this wheel stand left over, for those who like it, we just offer a seat that you can attach to it. Now the struggle is, is that was a couple of years ago now, and I go to finally get my load cell pedal for my elites, and I go to get the GT seat add-on. I go online and their website just says go contact these realtors or go contact these companies to go order this from. Okay. So I go to do that and all of them are showing them out of stock with no estimated time that they'll be restocked. So now I'm sitting here going, oh my God, I have to spend instead of 400, 500 bucks for a new seat. I have to spend a thousand dollars to get a new stand for my wheelbase, a new bracket for a seat, a seat, and everything there, and I'll still have this stupid wheel stand left over, and then I'll have to go figure out how to sell it, and then it's heavy, so then shipping costs are going to be absolutely detrimental, and it's just not consumer friendly. And the thing that I struggle with is that... The GT seat add-on was on the market for less than three years, and we've gotten no communication from Next Level Racing if it's even going to be in production any longer, or if it's just in a time frame that, you know, they're running out of materials and they just are struggling manufacturing it, or they're struggling to get it to the distribution center or to get it to these um, to get to these third-party sellers. Nothing. And kind of the same thing happened with Fnatic CSL Elite pedals is that the original 1.0 version was announced in 2016 and within the last year or so they decided instead of selling $100 pedals with a $150 load cell pedal add-on they took it all off the market and they now sell it as a singular bundle for $300, so they're now making an extra $50 or charging an extra $50 for a product that used to be quite a bit more consumer friendly. I think the reason why is because the CSL Elites were right within the normal CSL pedal price range. The issue is, is with this brand new bundle, if you save your money and you spend just a little bit more, you can get the full-fledged, 
Club Sport pedals for $400 that have even better materials and it's got like metal front plates for your for uh, the pedals and it's got the availability to get like a tuning kit and all the rest of it so it makes the CSL Elite pedals now in a really weird place I mean if they were worth $225 it'd be put smack dab in the middle of the CSL price range and the CS and the Club Sport pedals but now it's like why would you why would you get the CSL Elites when you could just get the even better club sports. But kind of the same thing is the CSL Elite load cell and the CSL Elites were taken off the market and there was no communication. So when it comes to these add-ons, my issue is multifaceted. And like I was saying, the first problem is the lack of communication. We live in a day and age that social media is everywhere. All you have to do is put out a tweet or a post or something saying, hey, if you guys ordered one of these products and are wanting to get one of these add-ons, please note we are no longer manufacturing the, these add-ons and when the warehouse is out of stock, it is done. So if you want to get these add-ons, do it now. That's all they had to do. They All they had to do for the GT seat add-on was that. And the same thing with the load cell. And it's incredibly agitating that they don't communicate that at all until they inevitably take the product off of the website, and then that's it. So, my apologies if this seems like a little bit of a rant. It is, albeit the first to admit. But it's incredible to see how low of a standard we've held so many companies for so long. Where they've been able to get away with some really unconsumer friendly things, policies, to have absolutely zero consequence. And the next issue that I have is... So after I, I finally find the last seat, uh, the last GT seat add-on, and I looked on recently on all sorts of these um, websites, and they're again out of stock, no estimated delivery date, no nothing. Come to find out, Next Level Racing, in that time frame, like within the last month or so, has announced a new line of seats. Isn't that coincidental? And of course, all these seats are interchangeable with all the different full-skill cockpits that they sell. But it's interesting that you can buy the seat. There's like metal brackets can to connect to the actual cockpits. But they don't sell like the metal bracing to connect to the wheel, wheel stand DD or the wheel stand 2.0. So you can buy the wheel stand and you can buy the seat, but you can't buy the bracket to connect the two of them anymore. And all they have to do in my mind is under the accessories page next to the next to the wheel stand DD and the wheel stand 2.0 for 150 bucks say, hey, here's the metal bracing to connect to the wheel stand 2.0 or the wheel stand DD and then you can buy one of our seats to put on top of that that way you're still selling the wheel stands normally you can get people into your new seat product range and you're able to support the legacy purchases that have been made years ago now that can still be up to date in your product line. I'm going to be honest. I'm a music major and I work in like barely logistics. So to me, this is like a no brainer. So why are we like having all these managers and product managers and all these rest of the guys that we're paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to to come up with these new product ranges and not one of them thought about hey while we're still selling these wheel stands what are we going to do if somebody wants to upgrade to add the seat i don't know 
and the conversation just ends? I don't know. It's just... I find it really interesting, some of these decisions that were made. At the end of the day, these are for-profit companies. All they care about is the final number when it comes to their expenses versus their revenue versus their profits. So I get the feeling that a lot of these decisions were made just for the idea of it's going to be too expensive to continue selling these add-ons as is. So they probably have the numbers and say, we've sold, I don't know, 50,000 wheel stand DDs and we've sold like a thousand or two thousand seat add-ons it seems pretty niche so why bother you know and I honestly struggle with that a little bit where it's these companies nowadays are so profit driven and so numbers driven that they forget about the experience of being a consumer what a consumer has to deal with when they go to buy one of their products and I again I find it so weird that they can't send out a newsletter they can't send out a tweet or anything and if they do it's so hidden with everything else that they just like brush on it once maybe not even and then that's it so Again, my apologies if this is kind of a rant video, but I wanted to open up the conversation to you guys to see if you guys have also had similar issues. If you guys have went to go buy a product and then find out, you know, a year or two after the fact that they no longer sell the add on. So then now you're sitting there going like, well, what the heck? What do I do with this thing? You know, uh, let me know down in the comment section below. Let me know your guys' stories because I really want to hear about them and I want to have this discussion and, and bring this to a larger scale where we can start really holding some of these companies accountable and just say, hey, if you're no longer selling the add-ons, can you just say why? Can you let us know what we're supposed to do? If you don't sell the add-ons, do we buy something else? Do we, you know give us give us something to work with here because at the end of the day this is just not cool you know <laughs> so again uh let me know down in the comment section what you guys are working with if you guys have had similar issues to me or if i'm just kind of old man screaming at clouds over nothing you know <laughs> so again let me know down in the comment section down below and of course if you enjoyed this content make sure to like comment and subscribe as always and again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys have a wonderful day today. Take care. Bye.